So today I'll be talking about rule 16 of the rules of the road and rule 16 talks about action by the giveaway vessel. So in my previous videos, I have discussed rule number 19, 18 and rule number 5. I will give you the links to those videos in the description section below. Watch those videos as well. And I'll try to cover each of these rules uh, in my subsequent videos. So today's topic is rule 16, action by giveaway vessel. Before I start with the rule, you have to know what a giveaway vessel is. If you don't know so, then you can see here, uh, if you look on your screens, you can see there are two vessels here, which are involved. Let's assume they are involved in kind of a risk of collision. In one, the there is a blue vessel and the red vessel. So if you are on the blue vessel here, then you become the giveaway vessel, which means that you have to take action to stay clear of the red vessel in a risk of collision situation. However, if you are on the red vessel, then you are the stand on vessel. This vessel should maintain its course and speed ideally and let the blue vessel take action or the giveaway vessel take action to avoid collision. However, uh, as we will learn in my other videos or subsequent future videos, that uh, the stand on vessel also has certain responsibilities that we'll talk about when we talk about uh, rule number 17, which talks about action by stand on vessel. So today's focus is rule number 16, which is action by giveaway vessel. For this, uh, you should be familiar with the rules of the road uh, because I will be making some comparisons here uh, of rule number 16 with other rules uh, such as rule number, especially rule number eight, which is talks about action to avoid collision. I will cover that rule as well in a separate video, but uh, you guys should be familiar with the wording of the rule at least. All right. So let's start with what rule number 16 says. So rule number 16 says that uh, every vessel which is directed to keep out of the way of another vessel shall so far as possible take early and substantial action to keep well clear. Now a good way to understand these rules of the road is to make sure that you take each and every word apart and understand the meaning of each and every word. Only if you do so that you will have a good comprehension of the rule and you will be able to answer the questions asked you in the oral examination or practical application at sea. All right, so make sure that you do that. I, for one, try to focus on the rule more on a, in the broader sense of application, but I will focus on certain phrases such as so far as possible, early and substantial action. What is the meaning of keeping well clear? So all these things is what I will be focusing on as well. All right, because uh, rules number 12, 13, 15, and 18, if you're familiar with these rules, all of these rules apply to vessels in sight of one another. And all of these talk about or direct one of the two approaching vessels to keep out of the way of the other. For example, rule 13 is about overtaking situation where the vessel which is overtaking should clear, keep clear of the vessel being overtaken. All right, so all these rules talk about that. Rule number 18 talks about responsibilities within vessels that we covered in my last video. Uh, rule 16 and 17 basically assigns the respons responsibilities to the giveaway vessel and the stand on vessel respectively, right? We will not talk about rule 17 too much today, but uh, rule 16 specifically applies to the giveaway vessel. Uh, that is the one which is directed to stay out of the way of the other, as mentioned in the rule here. Rule 17 assigns more complicated responsibilities and privilege to the stand on vessel, especially when the stand on vessel will observe that the giveaway vessel is not taking action as it's supposed to. If you see some of the phrases here, which says take early and substantial action, keep make a note of this, make a note of so far as possible, make a note of what is meaning the keeping of well clear. All right. So to, to explain all these things, uh, I will make some comparisons with rule eight uh, so that you understand the difference between rule eight and rule 16 which will also help you to understand rule 16 basically. So rule 16 commands the giveaway vessel to take early and substantial action to keep well clear because well, that is basically an action to avoid collision. All right. And that is the title of rule eight. So rule eight also talks about action to avoid collision. And many of these phrases can be compared to one another. If you read these rules, I'll give you some examples here. So rule 16 says take early and substantial action. Uh, but and rule eight says take action that is positive made in ample time. Now, some of these phrases could be a bit vague for your understanding. What does positive mean? All right. What does ample time means? Is ample time five minutes before, 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before? Well, these terms have to be a bit vague. Otherwise, it doesn't cover all the situations. But what you have to remember is basically take as early as possible a substantial action. All right. And substantial by taking early action means you detect the risk of collision early. So for that, you have to be keeping a very active lookout. You have to be very aware of the situation. So you should need to have good situational awareness. As soon as you determine there's a risk of collision, you must take as early as possible action. Now, this early action will also depend on many factors. If you are in open sea, 
there's not much traffic around of course you can take action much earlier and there is a lot of uh, serum available for you to take action some some officers may delay the action as well um, but sometimes when you are in narrow channels or you are cha or you are transiting in waters of high traffic sometimes you cannot take very early action as well all right so it depends on the situation that's why these terms have to be a bit vague but uh, as soon as possible if it is possible take early action uh, what the substantial action means substantial means that uh, the other vessel should be able to detect immediately that you are taking action so the alteration of course should be so broad it should be so apparent that the other vessel should be able to read it right uh, rule 16 also says take action to keep well clear and rule 8 says take action that will result in passing at a safe distance basically at the end of the day you need to maintain a large enough cpa again the cpa there is minimum cpa that is mentioned by the master in standing orders but if possible not only maintain the minimum cpa but try and maintain as much cpa as possible especially if you have serum available all right rule 8 says that take the action that will result in passing at a safe distance whereas rule 16 says take the prescribed action so far as possible all right at the end of the day you have to make sure that uh, you are well clear and the effectiveness of your action is checked until the vessel is well clear of one another all right vessel is one well clear one only when the vessel is well clear that you should be coming back to your course finally rule 8 says take action if the circumstances of the case admit all right whereas rule 16 says take the prescribed action so far as possible all right so basically it's the same thing it's just that the language is varying but the meaning is essentially the same all right so what all these means is depends of course your action to avoid collision will depend on a number of other factors as well uh, such as like i told you the traffic situation how much sea room you are available what kind of waters you are transiting are you transiting coastal waters or open seas or narrow channels uh, areas of maybe fishing traffic so on and so forth all right so rule 8 uh, also provides more specific guidance for the giveaway vessel as well as other vessels of course uh, maneuvers should be large enough to be readily seen and the maneuver may be by course change alone but it can also be by slowing or stopping the engines so slowing the ship or stopping the ship if necessary uh, this is especially the case if uh, you are not very sure of the uh, of the risk of collision or you do not have enough information to assess uh, the risk of collision of course in open sea if you have sufficient serum you can take a broad action but you slow down and stop uh, practically you don't slow down and stop at sea so quickly you do that only in restricted visibility or you do that in vessels of high traffic or if you are approaching ports but uh, the whole the meaning here is that if you have scant information uh, you do not only have to change your course but you can also reduce the speed especially when you are uh, transiting narrow channels now the effectiveness of the actions taken should be observed and if the action is not enough then further measures should be carried out until the risk of collision is over all right now depending on the situation the giveaway vessel may or may not be allowed to cross ahead of the standon vessel this is what you have to remember you may cross ahead of the standon vessel if you are if you are well clears and you have, if you are your speed is more and your cp is very nice uh, not very nice but it's large enough to be readily apparent but most of the times uh, not most of the times again my choice of words is not correct but the giveaway vessel may also alter a broad alteration to starboard and pass the stern of the other vessel and this is what is preferred at open especially in open sea this is what is preferred that you pass a stern of the uh, stand on vessel that makes it safer because then the stand on vessel is passing away but if you try to pass ahead of the giveaway vessel most of the times uh, may not be allowed all right because rule 15 if you remember does not permit under normal circumstances a power driven giveaway vessel to cross ahead of the power driven stand on vessel so a giveaway vessel can cross ahead of a sailing vessel or hampered vessel or vessel uh, it is overtaking all right uh, such as a vessel not under command restricted in the ability to maneuver because you know that your speed is definitely more than the other vessel all right but try and avoid crossing ahead especially open seas or especially uh, uh, if you can make a broad alteration and pass the stern of the stand on vessel so if you cross ahead of a stand on vessel remember that you must pass at a safe distance and keep well clear based on rule 8 and 16 now again uh, making keeping well clear enough cpa this is not as only as per master standing orders but also based on good seamanship all right so although master standing orders may say one and a half miles or it may say 0.6 nautical mile uh, sometimes that also becomes close so if you have the serum available make sure that you maintain not only the minimum but as much cpa or closest point of approach that you can with the other vessel so this is what rule 16 is make sure that you read each and every word and understand the meaning of each and every word remember these key points 
remember the key phrases because when you are supposed to be answering the survey or you are engaging in practical application remember these key phrases which makes it very important sometimes they are vague but uh, they are also important for you to remember all right so in my next video i'll cover the action by stand on whistle which is rule 17 i try to keep these videos short uh, but at the same time a bit detailed so that it helps you to understand rules for orals so all the best guys study hard keep subscribing to watch my videos and get notification on my further videos i look forward to your likes and comments and feedback uh, see you soon with my next video bye